Hi there! In a previous video, we talked about L1 and L2 regularization, which help us prevent overfitting by penalizing large weights, effectively reducing the influence of certain connections and neurons. Today, we are going to explore another powerful regularization technique called dropout. Let's see how it works. Imagine you have a neural network that's starting to overfit. Its performance on the training set is excellent, but it struggles when faced with new data. Dropout combats this by temporarily dropping out or deactivating a subset of neurons in each layer during training. Think of it like flipping a coin for each neuron. For example, you might decide that there is a 50% chance a given neuron will be kept and a 50% chance it will be dropped out for that particular training pass. When a neuron is dropped, not only are its outputs set to zero, but its incoming and outgoing connections are also effectively removed for that iteration. This creates a thin network, a smaller version of the full network that changes on every training example. The beauty of this approach is that it forces every neuron to learn robust features. Since any neuron might be dropped out on any given pass, the network can't rely on the presence of specific neurons to make accurate predictions. And instead, each neuron has to contribute with meaningful information on its own. In essence, Dropout trains a collection of many different smaller subnetworks that share weights. And then, when it comes to test the model, you use the full network and deactivate the dropout mechanism. One common way to implement dropout is through a technique known as inverted dropout. In this method, for each layer, you generate a dropout mask, a matrix with the same shape as the activations of that layer. Each element in this mask is one, or keep the neuron, with a probability equal to the keep rate, let's say 0.8, in zero, drop the neuron, with the complementary probability of, let's say, 0.2. You then perform element-wise multiplication between this mask and the layer's activations, effectively zeroing out the neurons that are dropped. Because this process reduces the overall activation, you scale the remaining neurons by dividing by the keep rate. This ensures that the expected value of these activations remains the same whether dropout is applied or not keeping the network's behavior consistent. And again, at test time, you don't apply dropout and the full network is used for making predictions. The scaling done during training via inverted dropout means that you don't need any additional adjustments when deploying the model. And why do you do that? Well, without dropout during testing, you avoid introducing randomness into your predictions, ensuring that the outputs are stable, reliable, and deterministic. In summary, dropout works by randomly disabling neurons during training, which forces the network to learn redundant robust representations that generalize well. Dropout is usually implemented in practice with the inverted dropout technique, which, with its scaling step, keeps the expected activation levels consistent, allowing the network to transition smoothly from training to testing. Finally, this simple yet effective method has become a staple in deep learning helping models achieve better performance by reducing overfitting and improving the overall generalization. Thanks for watching. Please hit the like button if you enjoyed this explanation and subscribe if you want to stay up to date with the content I create on this channel. See you next time. Bye bye.